So basically, the idea is this. So it comes down to the insight that the federal government cannot be expected to limit itself. You know, now I can understand somebody being skeptical of this in 1790. But, you know, we have a little bit of experience in this area now, and I think this is rather an understatement, if anything. So something outside itself has to do the limiting. It can't be the courts. Oh, the courts will put things right. Oh, let's everybody wait with bated breath to hear what our overlords have to say about what our Constitution means. Jefferson's view is that the Constitution was written in a way that the average person could understand it. You don't need some deep insight that you have to go into debt for for three years to acquire. None of that. Just read the words. Read and also read what was said about them, what uh, said about those words in the state ratifying conventions. And in fact, how has the leave it to the court strategy worked? Most of the time when the federal government gets away with something, it cites the Commerce Clause. It, the Commerce Clause it takes up about this much space in the Constitution. It takes up this much space in how the federal government justifies its activities. And in 60 years, starting in the 30s, going to the 1990s, the Supreme Court declared one federal law unconstitutional on Commerce Clause grounds, the Gun-Free School Zones Act of 1990. They combed everything. That was the only thing they could find the federal government had done wrong. So if you like a strategy where every 60 years your liberties might be protected, then by all means, don't listen to anything I have to say. Don't buy the nullification book. Don't do any of this. Or maybe maybe twice if you're lucky, twice in 60 years. Now, it's just unlikely this is going to happen. And Jefferson and his followers believe that more likely – was the outcome that whereby the federal courts would just rubber stamp what the rest of the federal government was doing. No surprise there. So what logically bears the responsibility of keeping the federal government in check? Well, the states. The states created the federal government. I, I go through all the steps of this in, in nullification. The states are the, the sentinels that will say, now, wait a minute. In this particular state, we're just not letting you do this. And this is really, it just boils down to common sense. It really is common sense. If if the federal government is doing something that it's not authorized to do, you don't wait around fruitlessly for years hoping that somehow it'll change because it doesn't. So we're going to try this. That's what it boils down to, the insight that the federal government cannot be allowed to have a monopoly on determining what its powers are. 